Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Today we are benchmarking the AMD Ryzen 7 5800H, the second Ryzen 5000 mobile APU that we've had hands-on time with so far. We previously checked out the Ryzen 9 5980HS in ASUS's impressive ROG Flow X13 Ultra Portable and found that it performed quite well, but in this video we'll be more focused on AMD's mainstream high-end laptop option. While the 5980HS is probably only going to be found in a small handful of devices, the Ryzen 7 5800H will form the back backbone of AMD's gaming laptop platform, and like the 4800H before it, I'd expect this to be the most popular chip in the series. The Ryzen 7 5800H is a new APU which features AMD's upgraded Zen 3 architecture for the CPU cores, bringing with it a unified 8-core CCX and double the L3 cache. Zen 3 also increases IPC for the CPU cores, and AMD are able to clock these chips slightly higher than previous generation parts, despite using the same TSMC 7nm process node. Outside of the CPU though, the 5800H has largely the same feature set as the Ryzen 7 4800H from the memory controller to PCIe support. While not the highest end processor in AMD's lineup, the Ryzen 7 5800H features a fully unlocked 8 core 16 thread design with 16 megabytes of L3 cache. On the CPU we're looking at a 3.2 GHz base clock and 4.4 GHz boost, and it's really just in these clock speeds where the 5800H sits below the flagship 5900HX and 5980HX. On the GPU side we're getting a fully unlocked Vega design with all 8 compute units enabled, clocked up to a maximum of 2.0 GHz. Again the only difference here compared to higher end models is a slight reduction to clock speeds. The primary difference with the 5800H compared to the last gen 4800H is in the new Zen 3 architecture compared to Zen 2 previously. Same 8 core CPU design, and clock speeds have only increased by 200 MHz on the boost clock and 300 MHz on the base clock. It's the increased IPC and double the L3 cache that will be providing the bulk of the improvement here. In addition, we do get one extra GPU compute unit enabled, taking us from 7 to 8 CUs, as well as a 400 MHz increase to frequency. However, in most laptops that use the 5800H I suspect we'll be seeing discrete graphics, so the CPU is the primary thing to look at here. Today's laptop test system that we're using for benchmarking the Ryzen 7 5800H is the XMG Apex 17, which you might have seen in our recent benchmark video on the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060 laptop GPU. Check that video out if you're interested in how that GPU performs in games. Anyway, this is a really great test platform to use for the 5800H, as it, in its entertainment mode, it runs as AMD expects, with a sort of 5-8 to eight minute boost period up to 54 watts, before dropping down to 45 watts long term, the default TDP for this processor. This is similar to how we saw the Ryzen 7 4800H operate in a range of systems last year. In addition to this 45 watt mode, there is also a performance mode that sustains 54 watts indefinitely, something to keep in mind if you are interested in buying an Apex 17 when they go on sale later this year. That will give you a small bump to the performance we're showing in this video, but as with all our laptop testing, we normalize for power to keep a fair playing field between laptop CPUs. The Apex 17 itself is sort of your classic mainstream laptop design that's for mid-range to entry-level buyers that just want something basic with the best performance they can get for the dollar. So there's plenty of cooling in here, and if you so choose with a custom fan curve, the Apex can run near silent without losing any performance. RTX 3060 with up to 115 watts of base power inside, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 memory, and a 1080p 144Hz display. This laptop could be a good choice if you're a budget conscious shopper and want a performance oriented design, so I'll leave a link in the description with more information. Let's get into the performance charts, and I'll start with Cinebench R20 multi threading as always. You're not going to sit towards the top of this chart unless you have an 8 core design, and with the IPC benefits that Zen 3 brings, the 5800H is able to sneak its way into top position. In terms of a generation on generation performance leap, the 5800H is just 8% faster than the 4800H, but across the board, this allows Ryzen to extend its lead on Intel, with at least a 30% advantage over the Core i9 1090HK when both are running at 45 watts long term. 
Where Ryzen 5000 sees the bulk of its gains is in single thread performance. In Cinebench R20, the 5800H is a more substantial 15% faster than the 4800H, so that allows the 5800H to leapfrog Intel's 8 core 10th gen processors into the leading position among 45 watt CPUs. However, only clocking up to 4.4 GHz maximum is insufficient for beating Intel's newer Tiger Lake designs, and while they are only 28 watt processors, the 1165G7 and 1185G7 both deliver better single thread performance in this test. Our handbrake test takes around 30 to 60 minutes to complete on most modern H series chips, and here the 5800H is again 8% faster than the 4800H on average. This is a modest gain, but not really something that would make you want to instantly upgrade from a previous Gen Ryzen processor. However, there is an incentive in these CPU encoding workloads to upgrade from Intel, where the 5800H is 63% faster than the Core i7-10750H and 28% faster than the 10980HK. Blender was the workload where I saw the smallest gen-on-gen -gen gains for this Zen 3 processor. The 5800H is still very fast and delivers good performance in this multi-thread workload, but the gains compared to the 4800H are negligible. Relative to Intel processors, you'll see performance 30-70% to better than equivalent 8 series parts in the Core i7 range and above. Code compilation is one of Ryzen's stronger workloads. In GCC compilation, the 5800H completed the workload 18% faster than the 4800H, putting it well ahead of Intel's equivalent processors. In Chromium compilation, the 5800H is 13% faster than the 4800H, and not as dominant relative to Intel processors, but still ends up the better choice for people that want a laptop for coding work. MATLAB benefits significantly from Ryzen's increased IPC and high L3 cache. Gen on Gen, the 5800H is 19% faster in this application using the built-in benchmark, which like in the Cinebench R20 single-threaded test, pushes AMD's laptop processor ahead of Intel's Core i9-10980HK for the first time. In Microsoft Excel, we see AMD benefiting in this workload from increased cache, posting a 15% gain over the Ryzen 7 4800H. This is enough to have the 5800H outperform Intel's chips up to the Core i7-10875H. However, the 10980HK remains the overall fastest chip here by a small margin. In the PC Mark 10 Essentials test, which measures basic application performance and loading times, web browsing, that sort of thing, the Ryzen 7 5800H performs well, topping the charts. We're not seeing a huge gain over previous Ryzen processors, just a 9% improvement, however this makes the 5800H about 5% faster than Intel's H series parts. Realistically, high-end laptop CPUs from either brand will deliver solid all-round performance in basic apps. In the applications test, the 5800H again performs well, however the margins compared to Intel's processors are slim, so like with the Essentials test, there is no real difference between a 5800H or 10875H for office apps in practice. This CPU is a couple of percent behind the Core i7-1185G7, which is currently Intel's fastest processor for lightly threaded apps. In 7-zip compression, increased IPC and more cache allows the Ryzen 7 5800H to take top spot on this chart. We're seeing some of the largest gains versus Ryzen 4000 here, with a sizable 25% performance increase. The 5800H ends up 6% faster than the Core i9-10980HK for multi-thread compression. Decompression remains dominant for AMD, where the 8-core design really flexes its muscles. Again, not the biggest gains versus the 4800H, and the 5800H is slightly slower than the 5980HS, as this test is run entirely in the boost state, but either way you're left with great decompression performance with this processor. Acrobat PDF exporting shows the 5800H neck and neck with Intel's H series designs, although it is beaten in this heavily single threaded workload by the Tiger Lake chips we've tested so far. Another large gain over previous generation products here with the 5800H 19% faster than the 4800H. In Adobe Photoshop, the Ryzen 7 5800H is able to go toe to toe with Intel for the first time in the 45 watt class. Previously, this was an application where Intel had a clear advantage over Ryzen, but that's not really the case this generation. The 5800H is now equivalent to a 10980HK for performance. Another strong result for AMD is running an instance of the warp stabilizer effect in Premiere. Largely single-threaded, the 5800H is 16% faster than the 4800H, and at least 20% faster than Intel's H series designs. That gap does narrow when factoring in Tiger Lake, although the 5800H is still a couple of percent ahead of the 1185G7 in this workload. 
We'll move now into some GPU accelerated workloads and the combination of a Ryzen 7 5800H and RTX 3060 GPU is very strong in DaVinci Resolve, matching the performance that was previously only on offer in the largest, highest end Intel configurations. We don't have any direct GPU equivalent results to give you in this workload just yet, but in a similar power class the 5800H and RTX 3060 combination easily outperforms previous designs that relied on high end RTX 20 GPUs and Intel CPUs. In Adobe Premiere, using the Puget Systems export test, we see similar results. The 5800H is a mid-range configuration, and with an RTX 3060 is on par with higher-end Intel machines from last generation. Over time, we'll get more clarity into exact matchups for Premiere exporting, but the early results here are promising and show that, at the very least, allowing Ryzen to be paired with higher-end GPUs is a boon for content creators that want both strong CPU and GPU performance. If you prefer running your encodes on the CPU rather than using GPU hardware acceleration, Ryzen is undoubtedly the best choice for Premiere. The 5800H completed our render test at least a minute faster than other configurations we've tested so far, and that includes previous gen Ryzen designs and a variety of Intel laptops. I'm not going to place a big focus on integrated GPU performance with our review of the Ryzen 7 5800H because in the majority of laptops that use this processor, they'll be paired with some form of discrete GPU. However, for those that are interested in how the integrated design fares, I have a couple of benchmarks to show. In GTA 5, the 5800H delivers essentially the same performance as the 5980HS that we reviewed not that long ago, so the extra power available to use doesn't change the overall equation that much. In Gears 5, the 5800H ends up 5% faster on average than the 5980HS, which again is down to the power limit, allowing a higher sustained clock speed, despite the 5980HS actually having the higher maximum clock on the spec sheet. This small performance boost over what we've seen previously isn't enough to match Intel's best XE designs that we've seen so far. And then finally we have F1 2019 where the 5800H is able to roughly match the Core i7-1165G7 for integrated graphics performance and delivers about 7% more FPS than the 5980HS. Nothing too amazing, and again I don't expect many designs will actually use the integrated GPU exclusively. If you're wondering how the Ryzen 7 5800H stacks up in discrete gaming performance again, I'd suggest you go and look at our recent video on the RTX 3060 laptop GPU, which shows how this mid-range GPU from Nvidia fares. I'll need to test more laptop configurations to get a better idea overall, especially something with an identical GPU to this XMG Apex 17 that we've used for testing today. However, I haven't seen anything so far that suggests an AMD-based gaming laptop will deliver different performance to an Intel laptop in today's games on average especially when GPU limited. A different performance might have been the case previously where Ryzen 4000 processors were slower than equivalent Intel models, especially for 1080p gaming, which is very popular on laptops, but the Ryzen 7 5800H is able to swiftly keep up with the requirements of the RTX 3060. For some overall comparisons, the Ryzen 7 5800H is a modest performance improvement over the Ryzen 7 4800H. The larger gains come in single-threaded performance, where the 5800H is usually 15% faster or thereabouts. In multi-threaded workloads, you will also see gains, but less significant gains that are more often in the 10% range. The 5800H is significantly faster than the Core i7-10750H in almost all workloads, whether that is single or multi-threaded. Intel's 6-core mainstream processor is not very competitive, with the 5800H showing double-digit percent better performance across the board. In many instances, the 5800H is over 50% faster. The most direct competitor to the 5800H right now, in my opinion, is the Core i7-10875H, Intel's 8-core H-series design. In some applications, the 5800H and 10875H trade blows, such as in PCMark, Excel, and Photoshop. But there isn't an instance where the 5800H is slower than Intel's design, and when we look at multi-thread performance, the 5800H is usually in the range of 50% faster. AMD's 5800H is generally faster than Intel's flagship Core i9-10980HK, although it does depend on the workload, and there are some instances where the 5800H and 10980HK deliver basically the same performance. Multi-threading is a big strength of the 5800H, with the Zen 3 APU delivering 30% better performance in most instances. Lighter workloads see the 5800H anywhere from 5% faster to 5% slower, so pretty even in general. 
The 5800H isn't a true competitor to the Core i7-11850G7 as these parts sit in different power classes. However, right now the 1185G7 is Intel's best mobile processor for single-threaded workloads. The 5800H is not as fast as the 1185G7 here, although it does depend on the workload. If I had to put a number on it, I'd say the 5800H is roughly 5% behind the best Tiger Lake can do for single threading, although with the 1185G7 only offering 4 cores, it's a strong win in favour of AMD for multi-threaded tests. Overall, the Ryzen 7 5800H is a solid tune-up for AMD's H-series mobile processors designed for performance notebooks. AMD identified a weakness with their previous design, single-thread performance, and took it to the mechanic to swap out the Zen 2 architecture for Zen 3. The results are successful and give the 5800H the best performance on offer in its class right now in the vast majority of workloads. From a pure numbers standpoint, the generation on generation performance gains here are respectable but modest. 10% better multi-threading, 15-20% to better single threading. However, as a lot of the work was already done with the prior generation to bring AMD's lineup into a competitive position, the 5800H didn't need 50% better performance to be a success. You have to give AMD a lot of credit for what they've been able to achieve in the past two mobile generations, and I think the gains seen here with the 5800H versus the 4800H are quite good given the two chips are manufactured on the same 7 nanometer node. For those that already have a Ryzen 7 4800H system, I don't think there's much reason to consider an upgrade. However, with AMD extending their lead over Intel in multi-threading to quite a significant degree now, and usually beating them in single thread as well, those with laptops featuring any other processor generation should see a substantial performance uplift moving to a Ryzen 5000 system. And that's not factoring in other platform upgrades you will likely get, in particular a faster discrete GPU. As it stands right now, I don't see any major reason to consider an Intel 10th Gen laptop, even those with the Core i9-10980HK inside, because the Ryzen 7 5800H is simply faster what for what. The exceptions to this I'd make are if the Intel laptop is much cheaper for an equivalent configuration, or if the Intel laptop you're interested in has a niche feature that you require. Previously you may have considered Intel as typically these laptops were paired with faster GPUs and higher end models, but with Ryzen systems now including all the way up to RTX 3080 graphics, and in a number of high end systems, that's no longer a selling point for Intel's platform. In fact, in many cases, now you might not even require a high-end laptop to see excellent performance in productivity or gaming workloads. Something like the XMG Apex 17 that we looked at today is a more entry-level design with a lower price tag, yet it goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the biggest, fastest, and most expensive laptops from the previous generation that I've tested. While the Ryzen 7 5800H is the best mobile processor available in its price range right now, we are kind of comparing AMD's newest generation to Intel's prior generation. Tiger Lake H-series chips with 8-core layouts are expected in the next few months, and it's definitely shaping up into an interesting battle given the strong gains Intel made in lower power classes. If you need a new laptop right now, then go AMD, but it might pay off to wait a few months just to assess the competition, especially if Ryzen 5000 supply remains low and it's hard to actually purchase a new 5800H laptop at a reasonable price. Anyway, that's it for our benchmark review of the Ryzen 7 5800H. Interesting again to see more out of AMD's Ryzen Mobile 5000 lineup. If you're interested in supporting our laptop testing, you can subscribe to us on YouTube. Watching our videos is always a, a great way to support the channel. And if you do want to support us directly, we have our Floatplane and Patreon accounts as well. Links in the description below. We'll get access to things like monthly live streams, our Discord community, if you're interested in chatting with us, behind the scenes videos, all that good stuff. Anyway, Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.